Hello, everybody. I'm Miss Monica from the Howard County Library System, the Glenwood Branch, and I'm here with our next episode of STEAM Saturday. This is a pre-recorded class, so if you need to pause it or stop it at any time, you can, which is great. Um, I'm here with Miss Christie, who's behind the scenes. I wanted to give a big thank you to Miss Christie and everybody working behind the scenes to produce our classes. And thank you for, to you for coming to our class today. This is a really exciting series for us. Um, STEAM Saturday is our um, class that covers, you guessed it, science, technology, engineering, art, and math. And the way we do that in STEAM Saturday is we learn through some fun and interesting little activities that you can do at home. So all of our activities today um, are really easy to do. They really use common everyday household things that you should have around your house. You can always switch things up. You do not need to use exactly what I use. I'll give you some alternatives. So in case you don't have the item, you can use that or find that maybe. And just ask your grown up before you go and get supplies just to make sure. Um, and yeah, who's ready to do some, some STEAM Saturday? Awesome. Well, today our topic is nature and where to find nature. So we're gonna talk a little bit about one of my favorite, favorite places to go and that is our national parks. And in our national parks, we see lots of different nature. So let's do like a little warm up activity um, with nature. So we can think about some of the things that we see in nature. And if we were to go to a national park, um, what we could find. So the only two, and you can pause it and then go run and get these. You're just gonna need a piece of paper and you can see I wrote nature scavenger hunts. These are some of these, we're gonna make a list of things that we could take take our list with us and maybe look for when we go to a park. And it doesn't have to be a national park. If you go to a state park or a county park or city park, or um, there's so many wonderful parks here in Maryland. Um, we're just gonna focus a little bit today on the national parks, which there are quite a few in Maryland, um, but really go to any park and you can see nature. And then you're also going to need a marker or a pen or a pencil, whatever you have handy. So go ahead and pause the video and run and get those. Okay, did you get those? Awesome. So let's think of some things that you might see out in nature. We're gonna write them down. If you do not know how to spell them, don't worry. You could draw a picture or you could ask a grown up. Um, you don't have to do this along with me right now. You can do this later too. So I know I have some younger listeners and some, some older listeners, so either one is fine. So did anybody think of something? I have some hints. Um, a ladybug. Did you see the ladybugs? I saw the ladybugs too. They're one of my favorites. So you could see a ladybug when you're out at a park. Okay, so let's just write that. You could draw it too. We have different colored markers. You could make this like really pretty. Okay, there's my ladybug. And what about, you see something else up there with wings, a butterfly? You're right. So go ahead and write that down. Color mine. Butterfly. What are some other ones? So I see a caterpillar. That one's one of this, this one. See the caterpillar? You could do a caterpillar. I always think of the very hungry caterpillar. As you know, that's one of my favorite books. Um, and I see a caterpillar. I wonder if he's had his this food. Okay, caterpillar. So just continue on this and write different things. Um, I'll give you some different ones you could do. Um, you could also see like bigger animals, right? Like what are some bigger animals that you would see out in nature? You could see a deer. We actually went to a national park a couple weeks ago and we were taking a hike through the woods and saw a whole herd of deer and amazingly, we didn't get cl too close. Um, we used our, our camera to kind of um, zoom in and see them a little bit closer, but um, we were able to get some really good pictures of them and kind of watch them from a distance, which was really neat. Um, you could also see squirrels. Um, yeah, some lots of bigger animals and smaller animals and insects. What about spiders, bees? You guys are thinking really good. Then there's also, things that you see on trees, like leaves or branches or poison ivy. You definitely don't wanna to touch that. So as you go out to nature, 
and you're at a park, there's some important like things to think about. And one of those is to observe nature, but not to touch it and definitely not to take it with you. Um, as tempting it might be to pick a flower that you see like a wild flower, you just kind of want to let those be and make sure that other people can enjoy them and you don't ruin any habitats or just nature in general. Um, so I always like the, um, the take a picture or leave only your footprints um, saying. I think that's really nice to, if you see something that's pretty like um, a ladybug or a spider, not to bring it home as your pet, but just to take a picture of it. Um, and same with um, wild animals, like if you were to see a raccoon or an opossum or a squirrel or my mouse, I hope you're writing these down if you want to add to your scavenger hunt, um, but you just leave those alone. They are wild animals. They're super cute, I agree, um, but you just wanna keep your distance and um, not go too close to them and definitely don't touch them because they do bite um, and you don't wanna get bit by a wild animal. Um, but also the other thing that I really, like is the um, saying no, leave no trace. Um, and that means to not leave anything of yourself um, out in nature and in the wild. Like you wouldn't want to have um, a juice box and leave the box just in the middle of the woods because it's not good for the animals that live there to have that trash there. And it also just makes the parks look really gross. So um, that's a, that's a big thing with me that if I do see trash when I'm out in nature that I pick it up and I take it with me. Sometimes I keep, um, just an old plastic bag in my backpack so that I can, um, make sure that I pick up trash. So that's really important. Um, just not to leave anything and not to take anything with us. So let's move on to the national parks a little bit. And I want to share with you some things about the national parks and just let you know, I do not work for the, um, to the national parks, I work for the library. Um, and, you know, like I said, you can choose whatever type of park to go to. I just happen to personally visit a lot of national parks and it's one of my favorite things to do. And it's something that my family does together and we've been doing it, you know, for a really long time. So I kind of wanted to share some of that information with you because if you like nature and you like to go out and see things, um, the national parks are, are a wonderful research resource for our for everybody. Um, and I know some of you are listening from further away. Um, there's other national parks where you're living. I'm going to focus a little bit on the ones on in Maryland, just because where we are in Maryland. And I want to I want you to if you are in Maryland, um, you know you can you can explore this. But by all means, um, explore the ones wherever you're at. So. The national parks. So there are 423 national parks. I had to look that up to make sure that I got that correct. And they are public land that has been set aside by the US government to make sure it stays a park. So there's not a housing development or a big office building or something built on it. Um, the, the park system was created so that Americans and visitors from other countries as well could visit these beautiful places and they can stay beautiful places. So there are 63 elite national parks and they've been selected by Congress. They're kind of the bigger parks um, like Mount Rushmore or um, now I'm blanking, but I know Shenandoah is one of them that's in Virginia. Um, they're the really Everglades. Um, they're the big, big ones. Um, so they're the 63 elite. So a lot of times you'll see, I'm gonna show you some book suggestions a little bit, that those are usually what the books are written about is the big ones. And I definitely would love to get out West and go to all the big parks out West. It's on my, my bucket list. I hope some of you have seen some of them. So really they look beautiful. Um, but then there's also other national sites um, that are still in the national park system. Um, and these include national historic sites, national seashores, um, national monuments, there's even some trails, um, there, there, there's many of those. So that's how it goes from 63 to 423. <laughs> so um, little math, that's a, that's a big scan. Um, I did mention national historical sites, pretty much on most of the national parks, you can find some really cool history. So I know this is a STEAM class, um, but I happen to also love history and some of you, raise your hand if you like history. Awesome, very cool. So you can find out some really, really neat things about history at the National Park. 
Um, I mentioned seeing the deer that was at Harper's Ferry National Park. And Harper's Ferry is full of really cool history, but it's also full of some really cool nature. So it depends on sometimes a visit. Um, it happens to be kind of close to our house. So sometimes we do more history searching and then other times we do more nature walks and exploring nature a little bit just kind of depends on on what um, especially my kids want to do that day so we'll do that so it's kind of neat you can go to one of those and see them so when you go to them a lot of people don't know this and I actually just talked to a park ranger last week at the national park that I was at last week um, about this but a lot of people don't know that they offer something, I'm gonna move our scavenger hunt. You guys can keep working on that later if you want, but they have something called the Junior Ranger Program. And they are um, designed exactly for kids and especially the age group that this class is for, um, kindergarten through like fifth grade or even older or even younger. Um, they have these um, Junior Ranger Programs and a Junior Ranger is about becoming a small ranger, like a park ranger. And you get these books, and I'm gonna show you a couple of them. So this is Cape Hatteras. And they're just, this one's a little smaller. Sometimes they're full size. It just, every park is different. And you can see, my son did this when he was little. Um, there's different activities. So this one was really cool. It's about night, night lights and how, um, you know, artificial lights, like your car lights or lights from a lighthouse or uh, street lights aren't very good for some animals that they need darkness to survive and do what they do. So um, he got to learn about that. You can see this one's about astronomy and he got to draw some constellations. So these are chock full of really fun activities and lots of lots of, I call it kind of like learning on the side. Um, it's so fun that you forget it's, you know, learning, but you are learning when you do these things. Here's one on beach combing. This was at a beach. So you can see that these books are so cool and they, they have them for almost every park. Sometimes you can go online and print them off first and you can look through them and see what kind of activities. They usually give you a choice based on your age. So they'll usually say if you're you know, this age, you can do three activities. If you're older, you, know, you can do eight activities. They're all different um, and they're designed for how old you are. You can do more, always do more. You could do the whole booklet if you wanted to. Um, sometimes we take them home and do the rest of them. But after you finish them, you go through the park and some of them take longer, some, some of them take shorter. Um, but when you're all done, you bring your book back to the park ranger station and they look over your work and then they make you a junior park ranger. And you have to get sworn in, which is really cool. And then they sign your book and they usually give you, sometimes they give you a patch but more of the time they give you these badges and you can see these are my oldest sons. Um, he's actually 18 and these are all the different parks that he visited when he was little and did the junior ranger program. So you can see there's Hampton, which is really nearby um, Baltimore actually, close to us in Maryland. There's the Appalachian Trail, um, Glen Echo Park. I'm sharing just some different ones. Um, Fort McHenry, that was so cool. I had never gone to Fort, Fort McHenry. I've grown up in Maryland my whole life and I'd never been there until, my, until we took my, our kids. And I couldn't believe I had never been there. It was so fascinating and so cool. And it's right on the water in Baltimore. It's beautiful, highly recommend it. Um, so there's some different ones. There's Valley Forge. Um, that was a little further away in Pennsylvania, but we were visiting family in Pennsylvania and we went to Valley Forge. So um, there's different ones. I think this is the furthest one we have is the James Garfield house, which was in Ohio. Again, we were visiting family and uh, we went one, one morning to go see his house. So Great Falls Park, um, we, we were also there a couple weeks ago, really pretty. So you can earn these when you, get, when you finish the Junior Ranger program. And on my son's book, um, I just, and this is, I'm gonna kind of move this down a little bit. So this is just a binder. Okay, this is just a cheap binder I got at the store and some page protectors. And what we've done is, again, we do not take anything from the park um, unless we're given it by the park ranger, like the badges. Um, but we like to keep a memory of our, our time at each park. So the one thing I really bring back is pictures. And I don't know if you can see that. Um, that this was a special junior ranger day. You can also look um, have your grown up look at the website for each park. 
Um, during non-COVID times right now is a little different because they're not offering a lot of in-person uh, programs and sometimes the visitors centers aren't open. So just always have your grown up check the website before you go to a park, just so you know what's going on. Um, but this one was a special junior ranger summer program. Uh, it was like a little day camp that they offered um, and they were up on Concocton Mountain and they got to plant all these trees. They were doing some reforestation. So again, that's a great learning of nature. And again, my kids were really young there, but um, these park rangers were so nice to my kids and taught them lots of things about trees and planting trees. But that's the picture. We didn't bring a tree back. We didn't bring a pine needle or a leaf to remember our experience. We took a picture. So that just goes, and you can see I wrote a little bit. I'm into scrapbooking. You don't have to be into scrapbooking. You could just, um, you know, put this in a, in a binder. Um, and then for each of those programs, you can see like this is Concocton Mountains. It's not far away. If you live near Glenwood, it's probably about an hour and a half away. Um, but this is the park brochure. They're available at most parks. Um, that's the Junior Ranger badge. I think this was even an activity for the 100th year of scouting. Um, like I said, national parks are very pro-learning and they're very pro-kids. Um, they're very pro-scouting um, if you do that. And they really have different programs. You just have to kind of have your grown up look for them or ask when you go to the park. Um, so that is, like I said, there's this little Junior Ranger um, booklet that he did at that park. Um, that one I believe was also very nature focused, which was cool. They gave him a, a patch for uh, doing that special day. And then, like I said, they usually give you a certificate as well. So I like to save these all in a, in a notebook. You could do like a folder or something. So that's kind of a fun activity once you've, you've done those um, Junior Ranger. Um, programs. So you can see that he has a lot of these badges and we just didn't want to lose them or by accidentally get rid of them or something. So I made that wall hanging and all it is is felt, a dowel rod and some string. Um, I sewed that one. I do have a sewing machine and I'm handy with it, but not everybody has a sewing machine and that's okay. Really, truly, it's okay. So I'm gonna show you how to make a smaller one and you could just start putting your badges on this or you know, if you get like a patch or you take some pictures or something, you could put them in this, this little, I made a little pouch on this one. So all this is, is you're gonna need a piece of felt. Craft stores sell these little teeny rectangles like so. Um, they're like 29 cents maybe, um, you can get those. Or if you have a bigger piece of felt at home, then you know, you could cut Cut it smaller or you could make it long like mine um, or my son's it's fine so I just folded this up and I just took a stapler and I just stapled the ends and then I did the same thing at the top but I just folded it down less stapled it you could put a piece of ribbon over it um, to make it so you, know, you don't see the staples um, and then what I did was I took a dowel rod which maybe your grown-up has um, in their workroom or their basement or something. And I just thread it through the, the top. Um, and I just put some twine, string, ribbon, whatever you have is fine. And then this becomes a wall hanging um, for your special um, junior ranger things or you know whatever you get. Maybe you bought a postcard at the gift store or um, a sticker or something you could put on it. You could do that with paper and actually, or special you know something and, and do that with the things that Maybe, you, maybe you're lucky and you get um, a patch or a postcard or sticker um, when you go to the parks at the gift store. Like I said, some of the gift stores, the visitor centers are closed. Just be aware of that. Um, I've seen it half and half. We've been to a couple um, national parks in the last uh, two months. Um, like I said, we really were, were excited to get back out a little bit and be in nature. And um, some of the visitor centers have been closed and some of them have been open it, opened, but limited services. So just always check, have your grown-up check the website. So that is the Junior Ranger program. And I think I'm almost running out of time. I wanna show you one other thing really quickly that you can do at home. So I get really into finding out all the different parks and I get into like, we need to visit all of them. So when the kids were little, I did look up on how many were close by, like how many were within two hours away from us. And that's how we started going to them. Um, and kind of fun, like, do you ever get bored in the summer? Raise your hand if you get a little bored in the summer. Um, you're not going to school, you might not be going to camp. Um, 
you know, you might be stuck at home. What could you do? And going to parks, so state parks, local parks, national parks is kind of a good way to spend your time and you're outdoors and you're checking out nature and it's fun. Um, but I don't want to forget to go to all the fun parts. So for this activity, you either need some, these are just craft sticks. They look like the ones that the doctors use when they, they look at your, your throat or your mouth. Um, these are, these are craft ones. They, they weren't stuck in my mouth. We don't, we don't want to play with that, but, um, or they kind of, you could use popsicle sticks. Um, they sell them in the craft stores again. If you don't have these, don't run to the store and get them. Just cut pieces of paper into strips and you can use it like that as well. So I took these and then I happened, if you've watched my programs before, um, I, I love washi tape and it's just decorative tape, um, again, craft store. Um, can you tell that I go to the craft stores a lot because I love crafts? <laughs> but that's decorative tape. Again, you don't need this. You could draw a flower or a ladybug or something on the end of your sticks, that's fine. Um, but there's the ones that I made. I just put the washi tape on top of it. And then what I did was I wrote out all of our favorite national parks that are close to our house. So Chesapeake and Ohio now, um, that's not far from our house and you can really access that in all different points in Maryland, um, Virginia, I guess there's kind of goes towards DC and Virginia, um, kind of parallels uh, the Potomac um, and Assateague Island. I really, really highly recommend the Junior Ranger program at Assateague Island, it's very cool. Um, Antietam's close, there's a lot of battlefields um, here close to us. There's even Gettysburg up in Pennsylvania. Um, there's Monocacy in Frederick. Um, there's, there's lots of cool Civil War history, but also has a lot of nature there too. So Concocton Mountain's really cool, Harper's Ferry. Um, so just write those. And then you're probably wondering like, why is she just writing those on sticks? It's like, it's like, what's she gonna do? So find a little container in your house. This just happens to be a basket we had at our, in our home and just put your sticks in. And I like to put them with the, the decorative part um, up top. And then, oops, one just dropped. That's okay. <laughs> I'll get it later. Um, but you know, like when you're like, what should we do this weekend? Like, you know, maybe your grown ups off work that weekend and it's going to be a pretty day. And what should you do? You can just go to your basket of parks and you can pull one out. Fort Foot. This is actually one that I have not been to. And I saw when I was um, looking up the names and how to sell them for this activity. Um, and I saw that one. So, really cool. So, there's your basket of parks to go to this summer. Um, when you come visit me at the library, I'd love to hear which parks you went to, especially if you went somewhere really far or you're from far away and you went um, to a different one that I haven't been to. I want to know about it. It's pretty cool. So books. We have so many books on both nature and the national parks at the library. Don't go out and buy these. Just borrow them from the library. There's so, so many of them. So here's my junior rat hat. Actually, this is my youngest son's. And for a while he had his junior ranger badges on these and then it got kind of heavy. So then he, he wanted um, a wall hanging as well. But that's an, another idea you could do with your junior ranger badges. Um, okay, so let's talk about books really quickly because we're running out of time. I have so much fun with you all and I have so much information I want to give you and then we run out of time always. So, okay, so this is great things to do outside 365 awesome outdoor activities and it's from DK Publishers. And this is a super interactive book and it's a really hands-on book. So if you wanna learn more about nature, especially maybe you can't get to a park today or you know one day and you just wanna like explore nature a little bit and you wanna be outside, this is really a fun book on some really neat activities like making a pine cone wreath or how to reveal a leaf um, skeleton or how to make your own spider web. I'm just, it amazes me that a little spider can make such an intricate web. Um, very cool. So um, how to make a waterfall wall. There were, this has so many good activities. I was looking through it and I was like, I want to do that and I want to do that and I want to do that. So hopefully you find that experience when you read this book as well. So next, going on our nature theme, we have Forest Club, a year of activities Crafts and Exploring Nature by Chris Hirschman, and it's illustrated by Marta Antello. I hope I said their last name um, correctly. It's a great book that combines outdoor activities and interesting facts about nature. So it's divided into sections, and there's one per each season in this book. 
This is also a beautiful book and the facts in it is, is just really cool. So for this, we're gonna look at the spring because it's spring when we're recording this and first airing it. Um, so here's like some common flowers you can find in the spring. I know I'm seeing lots of daffodils out. They're absolutely gorgeous. And it gives you facts about those flowers and information. Um, here's another really cool one. When you go out and take a walk in nature and you see some tracks, some animal footprints, paw prints, I guess I should say, um, but there are some different tracks and what they are. Remember I was telling you that I had seen some deer. So they're gonna leave tracks. So if I hadn't seen the deer and I saw their hoof prints, um, their tracks, I would know that that was a deer. So that's kind of a neat book, Forest Club. And then um, moving into, like I said, we have a lot of different books. You guys can screenshot that actually if you want to. If you're grown up, can look for those books for you or, or you know how to um, put a book on hold. But I'll just go over two more. So there's a lot, a lot of books on the national parks. Like I said, they tend to focus on the 63 elite national parks, the big ones, but that's okay because they're really cool. Some of them are really far away and it's kind of neat to, to see pictures and learn about them, especially if you can't go to them. So this one is by, is from um, Lonely Planet um, and it's Lonely Planet Kids, I think. Yeah, but Lonely Planet does some awesome travel books. Um, I use them, they're, adult, they're in the adult section, um, but now they've kind of branched out to kids books as well. Um, and this one is on the, the America's National Parks. And this one has stunning photos and it also has lots of facts and information about each of the parks. Um, I loved all the animal photos in this book. So if you like to see animals when you go out in nature, um, this, is, this is a cool book. Um, and there's also in here, they have little blurbs on things to see and do when you go to this park. So you can see here, this one is close to us. This is Shenandoah National Park. Um, it's one of those like elite, super big national parks. And if you're here in Maryland, it's not that far away. Um, you can probably get there depending on traffic, um, two or three hours. And it's really pretty to drive through and go visit. We also did a junior ranger program here about bears. That was super fascinating. The park ranger was really interesting. So again, call ahead. I'm not sure what each park is doing this summer or spring, but you can check it out. But you can see also park and numbers. That's some information, but look at that picture. It's gorgeous. If you can't go to Shenandoah National Park, you can see really pretty pictures of it. So last but not least, this is, I always shelve this book and I love big, huge books. And whenever I see this, I wanna stop shelving at the library and I just wanna flip through this and think about going to national parks while I'm working. Um, this is National Parks of the US. It's by Kate Cyber and it's illustrated by Chris Turnham. And this is an illustrated book and it's absolutely stunning. Um, and it introduces us to many of the national parks and it's filled with infographics, nature facts, park information and maps. Um, and it really makes you feel like you're at that national park. So I'll show you one of the pictures. This is Arcadia, Arcadia Park, National Park, um, which looks so beautiful. So there you go. I mean, you can just see the pictures, the illustrations are stunning in this book. I'll show you another page. Yeah, so Arcadia, Arcadia is in Maine. So it gives you, see, it also shows you lots of pictures of the book, of the animals and insects and things in nature that you could find there. Check this book out. And then I'll get to shelve it when you bring it back and I'll get to look at it again. So, so, so much fun nature out there. So many fun like, parks to explore, especially our national parks. Um, I hope this gives you a little taste. Um, if you go to a lot of national parks, hopefully I gave you some good tips or maybe, um, Maybe I made you remember some of your visits to national parks. If you don't go to national parks, I hope that you'll check some of those out this spring and summer and have a great time. So, and I hope you make some of the activities we did too. So it was great seeing you all today. Make sure your grown up goes to hclibrary.org and signs you up for the next Team Saturday. We've got some really fun classes coming up, not just Team Saturdays, but also many other classes that our instructors are doing with the library. So I hope you'll come visit us um, either in person, we're now open for um, 
scheduled appointments that you can come in for a little bit and pick out books. We're so excited for that and hopefully to see some of you, but we'll still be doing these virtual classes um, online for you to enjoy as well. So have a great, great day, read lots and go explore nature. Take care. Bye-bye.